Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and um, this is going to be part three, probably be the final part because I'm kind of reaching the end of my knowledge base here with the game engine and that's something I kind of like to point out. Um, what I'm showing you here is not the industry standards. You're not going to get a job at you know Blender Entertainment, Blender, <laughs> Blizzard Entertainment with this gaming knowledge that you learn here. This is more for kind of just to have fun and, and see how easy the game engine is to get in, just jump in and start doing stuff. Now, not to say that the Blender game engine can't do stuff that the you know you could get on with Blizzard Entertainment or whatever, but what I'm showing you, this is kind of just the basics, just one way to do it. Probably not the best way, but you know, there's more than one way to milk a duck. But anyways, this is how I do it and thought I'd give you a, a, a little lesson on how I do it. So anyways, all that said, let's go ahead and jump in. I got a few things I want to go over in this last section. First one being splash screens, like a menu that comes up when you first start the game. And then maybe one that goes as you go in between levels or something like that. So let's, let's do that. Let's create a new scene and let's just go ahead and name it menu 01. And now we're going to add a couple of things in here. Shift S, or excuse me, Shift A to add a plane. It's going to put it right there in the middle. Shift A again to add a camera. For the game engine to work, you have to have a camera in the scene. So let's clear the rotation on that camera. So it's pointing down. I hit Alt R. Now I'm going to hit G and move it all on the Z axis straight up. Now if I hit zero on my numpad, we're going to see the plane right there in the camera view. So let's hit G again with it selected and we just hold, click and hold our middle mouse button, our mouse wheel and we can zoom in and out like so. So let's get that where it's filling up our dotted line. Okay, go into edit mode on the plane and let's scale it sideways so it fills up our safe area. And if you're not familiar with the safe area, the dotted lines, the it's it's for the safe area is for titles and things, so you make sure that they show up on a TV screen. So, like, if it's if you put a title over here, it may not show up on a TV screen because sometimes TV screens kind of magnify your image a little bit, so you you may not see all the way to the edges. So, anyways, that's the perfect the purpose of the dotted line, the safe area. So, if you keep your your titles and things inside this dotted line, chances are you're gonna see it on any TV screen. So, anyways. Um, now let's go into the UV editing and this particular layout still has scene one in it so just click on the little uh, symbols there and go to menu one and let's go ahead and pop into camera view there as well and we don't want to put edit.png on here I pre-rendered a, a few um, images that I want to use as menus so let's grab one of those let's go uh, hit the plus sign creates a new image and we'll hit the Actually, we need to go image, open, and let's go to that folder. It's going to be in my Blender files under game test, and let's use splash 00, open. You can see it's a little eddy, uh, rendered out fairly nicely with a gun. And yes, that is one thing I'm going to be showing you this in this final segment is how to shoot, how to pick up a gun and shoot with it. So anyways, let's get it mapped onto this plane properly. As you can see, it's upside down, so let's hit A on our keyboard, and it'll select all the vertices, and we'll just rotate that 180 degrees. We can do it with our mouse and hold down Control and do it incrementally, or if you just right-click, it'll cancel it. You can hit R to rotate 180, 180 on your numpad, and it'll rotate it 180 degrees. So there we go. Pop back into default view, and go to menu one again. Go back to the camera view, tab out of edit mode, and we need to create a texture for this plane now. So we'll hit new, and let's go ahead and name it menu 01. Okay, and we'll go ahead and add a texture to it also. Actually, I guess I'm in the texture settings already. Okay, menu, let's name both the material and the texture menu. Zero, 01. Okay, texture. Now go to image or movie, and we'll want to 
click on our little thumbnail here since we already loaded it into Blender. It's already in the memory buffer. So, excuse me. Just click on that there, and you can see it's starting to repeat. We don't want that. So let's go down to Image Mapping and change Repeat to Clip. And just minimize that again. And we want to make sure the coordinates are going to be on the UV. And also, in our view here, in the display settings over here, if you hit N on your numpad, it'll pop up your properties there. Scroll down until you get to the shading, and you want to turn that to GLSL also. You can see it, it, goes, it, turn, it turns black. Like, what happened? Well, one other thing you need to do with the texture is scroll down to Influence, and right there, the E, that's the emitter. And it's like a, a, how, like a light bulb, basically, with writing on it. You can see the writing if there's light shining on the light bulb, but if the lights, there's no light shining on it, you can't see it until you turn the light bulb on, which is boom, like that. So anyways, I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but it makes sense to me. So now if we hit P to play the game, we see our menu screen. Now we don't know what to do because there's no writing on it. So let's, uh, let's try this. Let's go into Photoshop. That up there and let's open that image back up let's see here game test there we are and what was it splash screen zero zero splash zero zero open up okay so let's add some text to this We'll say press any key to begin. All right, we could fancy it up. You know, let's go ahead and give it like a drop shadow. That'll work. Maybe a stroke. There we go. Okay, that'll work. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to Alt Control Shift S to save for web. So it's smaller. Save and go to the right folder again. Game test. Where are you at? There you are. And we'll just go ahead and save it over what we already have there. Okay, so now pop back into Blender. And let's go to the textures. And since we overwrote that, we need to reload it into Blender. So just hit the little reload arrows there. Boom. And you can see it. Press any key to begin. So now if we hit P, we can read it. It's kind of making it blurry though, so let's see if we can uh, remedy that just a little bit. If we hit anti-alias, and you know what, pre-multiply too, let's see what happens there. Also, we, we were zoomed out some, so let's hit an N to kill the uh, property, so hit P again. And yeah, it looks a little better, of course, we zoomed in some. I guess the, we don't really need these two settings, because we just have to be zoomed into the proper, the proper length. There we go. Okay. Now, let's go to the game logic. Press any key to begin. We have to set that up now. So make sure your plane is selected. Add our little three little amigos here. And we want to do keyboard. And we're not going to specify any certain key. We're going to hit all keys. Go ahead and hook it up to the controller. And now we will go uh, scene. Where is that at? Scene, right there. And set scene. And it's going to be scene. Zero, 01 or what was the name of it scene space zero, 01 okay scene space zero, 01 boom okay hook that up and now when we hit p play our game any key to begin now uh, let's just uh, hit spacebar boom knocks you right into the uh, the game into the level 1 you just start messing around okay so escape back out and Okay, let's go ahead and minimize that. Let's go ahead and make one more menu, uh, one more menu screen. I want to do it for when you go between scene one and scene two. So let's do the same thing we just did. Uh, create a new scene. Name this one. You know what? Let's name this one Cutscene Zero One. Okay. And let's do the same thing. Shift A. Let's go to default view. Go to Cutscene. Shift A adds a plane. Shift A add 
a camera. Let's go to side view. And it looks like it rotated it correctly that time, so we'll just drag it up. Go into front view, grab our plane, scale it to fit the area yet again. Stay in edit mode. Let's go back to UV editing. Make sure we're in cut scene. Okay. Tab in edit mode, select everything. Okay. And add another image. Open. Go back to the correct folder. And we'll use splash 01 now. Open. And there we go. We need to rotate it around, as you can see, yet again. Select everything, rotate 180. Good to go. OK. So now, that's all we need to do there. Go back to default. And go ahead and create a, a texture for it. So we'll call this cutscene 01. And go to there, new texture, cutscene 01. Also going to be an image. And thumbnail, splash 01. Turn off, repeat, clip. And generated to UV. And um, emitter to 1. Okay. Go back to the shading, GLSL, and there we go. Save it. Go ahead and save it. And now let's go to the log game logic. And now we're going to set it up once we get to this scene. We just want it to kind of pause for a couple seconds and then go ahead and continue on. So we'll set up our three amigos here. And this is going to be a delay. And if you mouse over the delay, you'll see that it pops up, says this is the number of ticks before it triggers the event. And there's 60 ticks per second. So for a half a second, it would be 30 ticks. For two seconds, 120 ticks. So let's go 120. And let's go ahead and start hooking these up. And now it's going to be the same thing that we did earlier. It's going to change the scene. And we want to go to, actually, not restart, set scene, there we go, scene space 0, 02. Okay, and now let's go to scene 1 so we can tell it when to come to this cutscene. So go to scene 1, and when we touch this magic holy grail, we had it set to where it goes to scene 2, but we wanted to go to the cutscene now, so let's just name it cutscene 01. So now when we touch the grail to go to the cutscene, and then it'll time out after two seconds, and it'll go ahead and go on to scene two. So let's let's test this whole thing. Let's go to menu one, or start off, go into camera view, make sure everything's in texture. Let's go to each scene, make sure everything's textured. Okay. Menu. Okay. Camera view. Let's go and make this full screen. Uh, I don't know if I showed you how to do full screen before, but it's just control and then up on your arrow keys. Control, up. Makes it full screen. So just kind of zoom in there. Hit P to play. Any key to begin. Space bar. Okay. We've got Eddie walking around in here, running around, pushing boxes. Now let's go to the scene two. Boom. Cut scene. Scene two. So that's just that's a lot easier than I thought when I was looking it up, actually. I thought it would take a lot of scripting or something like that, but anyways, go back to scene one, boom. Cut scene to scene two, sweet. Okay, so let's escape out. Let's go back to scene two now. So now we have it where he enters scene two, and you see that cut scene with the guns. Like, ooh, he's gonna get a gun now. So let's give him a gun now. Um, let's. I, I went ahead and modeled a gun for this very purpose. So let's bring that in here. Let's go file, append. And let's see, go to our correct folder, game test, gun.blend. And let's just go, let's see, um, object gun, link pen from library, boom. You can see it put it right there in the middle of the scene right there by him. Oops. Minimize the screen. One thing, oops, I'm going to keep popping to different things here. Here we go. Uh, scene 2. 
One thing I've noticed with uh, Blender 2.5 is when you're editing and you turn on the proportional fall off, if you fail to turn it off when you come back into object mode, you grab something, it moves other things around with it. Maybe that's just in the game. Let's go to Blender Render. Nope, still does it there. So anyways, you gotta turn it off. So just hit O on your keyboard and then you can move it around. So O is the magic button that turns on and off the proportional fall off. Okay, so let's do our gun here. Let's go to the default view so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Go to top view, grab our gun, move it over, and let's set it just like, let's just put it right here. And I want to create a duplicate of it and just rotate it around so it's nice and fancy looking laying on its side. Scale it way up so we know something important. Okay, let's move this guy out of the way for now. Okay, this gun, what I want to do, when I walk up to it, I want it to disappear, and then I will have another one appear in his hand, so it looks like he picked it up. Okay, so the way let's do that, the way we do that, let's go to the game logic. We've got our gun selected already, and now when it becomes near Eddie hook them together when Eddie gets near it and we hit F on the keyboard both of those events it's going to end this object so we go edit object end object so we walk up next to it hit F picks it up. It, may, it disappears from the scene. So we need to change a couple of settings here. Probably don't want to get... Well, you know what? Let's try this this near setting. See what that looks like. So just go to camera view. P to play. So we walk up next to it. Hit F. Boom. Disappears. But I want it to appear in my hand. So let's do that. Escape out. And let's go ahead and grab the smaller one and let's put it in his hand drag it over and let's rotate it around until it looks like it's in Eddie's little mitt didn't really have fingers to hold on to it but we'll make believe Okay, that'll work. So now, what we need to do is parent it to his his little forearm here. So grab it, parent it. Actually, we need to change that to pose mode. Grab it, parent it, control P. And we're going to parent it to the bone. So now, if we go in, let's go back to object mode here. Now, if we go into play, you can see he's got it in his hand, but it's it's interfering with, with some things. The, it's it's a solid object. Go to the physics settings here. It's a static object, so it's interfering with the surrounding box that uh, is surrounding Eddie. So we need to make it a ghost so it can go through things. And let's go ahead and make it an actor too. So now we go into camera view. Hit P. He's got the gun in his hand. I know it's going through the floor, but uh, you get the idea. So anyways. He's got the gun already. We don't want him to have the gun in his hand until he walks over and picks it up. So, escape out. We're going to have to change a few things on here. So let's set add, add, add. We want it to say always be visibility, not visible. So uncheck visible. Hook that together. So now when we hit P, it's not visible at all. So we want it to become visible when he gets close to the gun and hits F. So let's give the gun a property now. We'll name it gun. Okay. Click the little gun again. And let's minimize all of these. Add, add, and add. And let's set this one to be near. Property, gun. Okay. Same deal with the gun itself. 
add another one here. Oh, I hit the wrong button there. There we go. And also when you hit F. Okay. So now when these two events occur, it's going to become visible. See, the visible is now checked. So now it's always going to be invisible unless you walk up to the gun, hit F, which makes the gun disappear, and then it makes it appear in your hand. So it appears like you're, or it looks like you're picking it up. So, excuse me. Go into camera view, and let's go ahead and maximize the screen, and hit P. Okay, so no gun in my hand, but there's a gun. I'm going to walk over and pick it up. Get close to it, pick it up. Oh, it didn't. I need to change some settings on the nears, the nears, I believe. So let's set this to, let's try three, and then let's make this a little bit bigger. Try five, okay? And let's, mm, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger too. Let's make this two, and this one can be four. Okay, now let's see if it happens. Walk over. Hmm. It's not wanting to appear in his hand. Let's see what might be the problem. Let me play with this a, a couple seconds and I will uh, I'll pause the recorder so you don't have to sit there and watch me goof around and uh, then I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, silly mistake. A um, couple of things I need to do in order for it to swap into his hand or appear in his hand is, well, maybe not a couple. Let's, first thing, I need to make the gun that he's approaching. It has a property, but it's not an actor in our scene, so we need to, boom, set it as an actor. So now, if we hit P, and walk over, doop do do boom, there it is. You picked up the gun. It's now in your hand and not on the floor anymore. So, we got our gun in our hand. What are we going to do with it now? Well, I think we want to shoot it, don't we? We want to shoot this gun that we have in our hand. So let's do uh, one other thing really quick. Let's go to the animation. And let's create a new animation for him to fire his gun. So, uh, let's see. What do we want to do here? We've got a few animations already. Let's create a new one. And we'll call this one Gun Pose. Okay? And let's just pose him like he's got his gun in his hand. Go ahead and turn on the automatic keyframe insertion. Hmm, I'm not able to rotate anything. Why is that? We got something going on here. Hmm. Let me try scene two. Is it working now? I can't even see anything. Where's my keyframes? Go back to the default view. Hmm. Animation. Sync. Insert keyframe, location rotation scale. I just want to do it here, but I'm not seeing it. There we go. That's weird. I wonder why it wasn't showing up before. Anyways, now that we got it, it's just one thing you should learn about Blender. If you're doing something and you're doing it right, but nothing's happened, just keep playing around until you get it, I guess. Anyways, let's get him posed up like he's. Getting ready to shoot this gun. He's got. Maybe he's shooting at a bird or something. I don't know. I don't know what Eddie likes to shoot at. Okay, so we got it. Let's let's arrange it to where the gun is pointing straight forward. 
maybe give him like a nice it's your creative judgment on this you pose him however you want to there we go that's our gun pose all right Let's go ahead and animate, or give at least give the key the feet some keyframes. So if he's walking and we hit it, he'll stop. Actually, we don't want that. We want it if he's walking. Yeah. So just leave those alone. Don't give those keyframes at all. So anyways, okay. Let's go ahead and clear out that and turn off that. Alt R, Alt G, boom. Okay. Object mode. Okay. So now we have our pose. And let's set it up to when we hit another key. He'll go into this pose and then we can fire. So let's go to game logic. And it's getting kind of spaghetti noodle ish, isn't it? A lot, of, a lot of settings in here. Let's add, add, add. Oops, one thing I've forget, been forgetting to name them. Um, let's name this uh, gun pose. Actually, that'll be the action. This needs to be when we hold down S button. Hold down the S button. So keyboard S. And we're going to go action gun pose. And it's going to be static one, static one, play until we let go. Continuous. Is this right? I think so. Let's give it three blend ends. Okay, now let's test it out. Okay. Hit S, should go in the gun pose. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Pick up our gun, get a little closer. Gun pose, all right. Okay, so now we got our gun, we got our gun pose. And he can walk with the gun. He's like, you, you talking to me, man? You talking to me? I'll shoot you, man. Anyways, um, now comes the tricky part, making this gun fire. That's that's the part that was keeping me held up from making this part three. I was trying to figure this thing out, and finally I did. And uh, it's not real easy, but uh, let's see if I can't show you moderately quickly. Um, we kind of need to do like we did with Eddie's body. Eddie himself is not tangible, really. You can see him, but the thing that interacts with everything is this box that's surrounding him. So we kind of need to do the same thing with the bullet, except sort of the opposite. Because if we set the bullet to come out of the gun, it's going to interfere with the box because it's kind of coming from the center. So it kind of it interferes and it bumps Eddie away and it just, it, it's not right. It's not the way it should work. So we got to make this, this uh, placeholder basically for it. So let's do that. And an important thing to remember when you're creating bullets and things like that like we're going to do now they have to be on a different layer so let's go ahead and just hold down shift and click on this layer here and that's where we're going to put our placeholder and it's just going to be a box so we'll shift a and we'll insert a cube and let's make it a little smaller okay and it doesn't really matter where it's at we'll just kind of put it hanging in the air in front of them and hit in for your properties and let's just name it bullet underscore place holder okay and now what we want that to do is it's gonna appear in our scene so when it appears we want it to start moving we don't want it to lollygag around we want it to take off it's gonna be a bullet so we'll say always going to be motion and we need to set it to be dynamic and since it's going to be interfering with the mesh, if we don't do this, we need to set it to be ghost. And Okay, so the dynamic gives us some more options. And the uh, research that I've done says to use the linear, lin v, I guess that's linear ver um, velocity. So we'll set that. And it needs to be L for local and add there. Okay, so let's try, let's just start with one, see what happens. So if we hit play, that should travel okay it's not going anywhere so maybe one is way too small let's try 10 
Oh, I forgot to hook it up. That's why. Try one again. P. Okay, but it's flying the wrong way. So we go to front view. Should be trying going negative one. Boom. Because as you remember, when we were setting up Eddie's walk cycle, the coordinates are based at the center of the scene. So Y is you know forward and back. And if you hit one, it's going to go increase towards the back. So it's going to go backwards. So you got to hit negative one so it comes towards the front. OK, so now if we hit play, boom, comes out. Which is not really fast as a bullet, but I'd like to keep it slow enough so you can see what's going on. Let's make this window a little bigger. OK. But we don't want that to be appeared at, you know, at the beginning of every scene. We want it to appear when we hit a button. So let's grab our gun. And we're going to add, add, add. OK. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, thinking for a second. Um, what we want it to happen when we press two buttons, keyboard, we want to hit S for when we go into the shoot pose, the gun pose. And also when we hit, uh, let's, let's go ahead and use the F button again for fire. So shoot and fire. I know those kind of mean the same thing, but uh, let's go ahead and name these. I keep forgetting that. This is always. This is more for your benefit than mine. If you uh, purchase the supporting files for this tutorial, you'll be able to go through and see um, what these are supposed to do near the gun. OK, and F button. Actually, I can probably recycle that F button, so I can probably get rid of this one. Yeah. And this will be S button. OK. So like I said, recycle that one. So just grab that and drag it down there. OK. And let's name this one Visible. And this one is Invisible. OK. And this will be it. Um, bullet up here. Actually, bullet placeholder up here. I spelled that wrong. There we go. OK, go ahead and hit that up. OK, so we want when we hit the F button and the S button at the same time, we want it to appear, this bullet placeholder to appear. So what we got to do is edit object. And we're going to add the object. And this is the default setting. So we need to say, bullet underscore place holder. We don't do properties this time, we do the object name. So now when we hit the F button and the S button, the bullet placeholder object, which is that cube, is going to appear. And when it appears, it's going to use that setting that we gave it, it's going to fly forwards relative to its currently current local direction. So whichever way our gun is pointing, it's going to fire out the front of it. OK. But like I said, it had to be on a separate layer. And I don't think it went to that layer that I wanted it to. So just select it, hit M on your numpad, yeah, and drag it. We don't drag it. Click on the layer you want it. And boom, it'll put it there. So in order to get it to work, we have to turn that layer off. So, but when we play, hit play. Let's go ahead and maximize the screen. Play. Go pick up our gun. Pick it up. Go into pose mode and hit F. You can see it's dropping out. It's not flying like it should be. Hmm. So let's investigate that. Control up also. I don't know if I told you that comes out of the full screen view. Well, I hope I told you that because that was a long time ago. Um, OK, so let's see what's going on with our bullet placeholder. Hold on shift and click that layer so we can see where it's at. It's an actor dynamic. And it's flying. Uh, let's give it a faster speed. Let's say negative. Uh, let's try five. And just play to see how fast it shoots out. OK. One other thing I forgot to do earlier. Um, I'm just full of forgetfulness, aren't I? We got our mad, our holy gray hair set to anytime it's touched. So anything that touches it, like if we shoot it on accident, it's going to take us to scene one. We don't want that. We only want it to take us to scene one if Eddie touches it. So collision, set that to collision, and property to Eddie. 
So now, only time the only time it's going to send anything to scene, send us to scene one is when Eddie himself touches it. So, okay. That being said, go ahead and save. Okay, now tr hit play. It still did it, didn't it? Oh, because I think I got two different grails here. Yes, I do. So let's see. That one takes us to scene one. Click it again. Goes to cutscene one. So let's get rid of that one. Okay. There we go. And I think that's the way the bullet needs to go. So let's turn its layer off. P. F. It's still coming down. I wonder why that is. Oh, I know why. I know why. Because it's set to the relative location of the parent object, which calls it to the scene, which is the gun. So we need to change the rotation of the gun because it's pointing forward. I mean, as you can see when we brought it in, the barrel is pointing straight up. So its relative Y location is straight down according to where it's positioned now. So let's go into edit mode of the gun and let's go into side view as close as we can get. Select everything by hitting A and let's rotate it 90 degrees and I don't want it that way so hit nine, uh, the negative button and it'll put it like that. And another thing is the cube's going to appear at the very center of it and you can see the center of it is that orange dot right there let's put the center of it at the tip of the barrel instead of the middle of it so let's drag that way down like so let's go into here and make sure it's still centered up and it is not so let's get the get leveled up like so and then just drag it over boom see our orange dot right there in the center of the tip of the barrel so now when we tab out we can rotate it around put it back in his hand like so okay so now then now I'll save it so now when we go into uh, the play let's get control up make it full screen play actually I need to go into camera view first play there we go go pick up our gun bank hold s go into shoot pos shoot position fire ah I touched the grail on accident so let's go boom cut scene to scene two and we get our gun Bank. It's firing backwards. <laughs> so maybe a lot of this takes a lot of trial in there. So let's go turn on the layer that the cube is on, grab it, and take that negative off of the front of that. And now if we hit play, actually, got to turn that layer off, hit play, uh, go get our gun. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. That's great and all. He's firing the box, but it's a ghost. So it doesn't... If, if you shoot something with it, nothing's going to happen. It's going to go right through it. So let's, uh, let's change that. Let's do something real quick. Let's uh, add a couple of things for him to shoot. Let's, add, let's just add a... Oh, let's say a tube. And we'll scale it on the Z-axis and then scale it down. Actually, one trick you can do to scale something only along two axes instead of three, I mean you can scale it, if you hit scale and Z, it's going to scale it only on the Z axis. Now if you hit scale shift Z, it's going to scale it on the Y and X axis. It's not going to scale it on the Z axis at all. You know, and if you hit just scale, it's going to scale it on all three. So, scale Shift Z to scale it down on the Z. We want a long tube. I must bring it up above the floor. Just set it down. That might be too tall. Probably fall over way too easy. So let's scale it on the Z axis and drag it down. Okay. And let's just let's move it over. Let's say over here. And before we clone a bunch of them or duplicate it, I'm going to go ahead and set it as an actor, and it's going to be a rigid body. And let's give it a collision bound of a cylinder. Okay, so now let's go ahead and shift D, 
Let's duplicate it a few times. Shift D. Shift D. Okay. So let's test out its rigidness by play. We're not going to shoot it. Okay. It bounced off of the ground. It's a little too close to the ground. It's probably coming through it a little bit. Let's grab it, move it up some. Now let's see what happens. Hmm, still bouncing. We don't want that to happen. Radius. Let's just set it to dynamic, see what happens. Hmm. Maybe a tube is not what I want. I'm not sure what's going on there, and I don't think I got the time to figure it out. So let's just add, you know what, let's just add a another cube. Oops, hit plane on accident. Shift, cube, there we go. Drag it up above the floor. And you know what, let's drag another one up on top of that. Okay, and let's rotate it some so it kind of offset. Okay, actor, rigid body, actor, rigid body. Can we see the, there we go, hit uh, Z to go into the, um, the wireframe view. Change the radius up a little bit. A little too big there. I guess it's probably perfectly set already. And let the collision bounds be a box on both of these. This one also needs to have actor rigid body. Actor, okay, all set. So now, Alt Z goes into uh, texture mode, play. Yeah, there we go. Now we're interacting with the boxes. So now, say we want to shoot these boxes. Let's go back. Let's grab our gun. F. Like I said, it's going right through it. We don't want that. We want to shoot them. We want to shoot these boxes and knock them over. So, let's make a bullet. Let's go back, turn on the layer that has the bullet placeholder, and let's create a bullet. Let's just put it up here somewhere. Didn't have to be anywhere any certain place. Uh, Shift A, add a, let's make it a cone. And let's go into edit mode. And we're gonna subdivide these edges here. So just select all those. Actually, a quick, easy way to select the edges of a cone. Actually, I need to make a new one because it did not fill the bottom of it in. Side view, Shift A, add a, cone. Let's go to the default so I got some control here. And cap the end. I don't need 32 vertices around. Let's just make it 16. Okay, well now we go into side view edit, view, edit mode. And a quick easy way to select the edges here. You know, normal. You would think you could just hit Control R and create a ring there, but it's it's not really a, a loop area because it all collapses down to one point there. So just uh, hold down Alt and click that ring around the bottom, and it'll select all of those vertices. Then you hold down Shift to select that one, and now you can grab the edge select mode and hold down Alt Shift and click that ring again, and it selects all the rings. So now we can go subdivide. Let's do it, let's do it three times. Okay, now let's kind of model it to look like a bullet. So let's scale that guy down, scale these down, and move that. Okay, it's not perfect, but it'll work. Uh, let's make it. Let's scale it way down so it's so we'll fit in the barrel of our gun. And let's bring it out like so. See the orange dot? That's the center. Okay. So now let's name it to bullet. Okay. And now we need to give it its own layer also because it's going to kind of do the same thing that the box did. So let's move it to. Uh, let's just put it right there beside that one. And let's go ahead and turn that layer on for now. Back to game logic, grab our box, and let's collapse all these guys. 
guess I should name them always. Uh, bullet. Uh, let's just call it uh, forward motion. There we go. Okay, so now this is where the I don't want to call it magic or whatever, but where we get the bullet to come in and be solid without interfering with our surrounding box of our of our little guy here of Eddie. So what we got to do is add, add, add. Go ahead and connect them, and the end the end product that I want to see is the edit object add object bullet. So what I want to happen basically is when I fire the box I want it to add the bullet to itself. So it basically spawns a bullet after it's fired. And I want to make sure it's out of the bounds of Eddie's box here before it spawns that bullet. So let's go near and let's try two and we'll say three but that's for if it's close let's I want it to be when it's away from it so let's hit inverse INV it's gonna inverse that setting so now when I fire the box after after it gets cleared a distance of two uh, blender units it should spawn this bullet which is solid we need to go ahead and set some settings on it it's going to be dynamic. Okay, so it should spawn that after it gets to a certain point. So let's try it out, see how that works. Actually, one thing I need to do is turn the bullet in the right direction. It needs to point forward instead of up. So let's go into edit mode, rotate it 90 degrees, make sure it's centered on that orange dot, tab out. Turn off both of those layers. And now if I hit P, I'm going to play. So come pick up my gun. Boom. Hold on S and fire. You can see it put the bullet over there. It's really small. Let's try it again. See the bullet just kind of falls to the ground. See the bullets falling over there? It's kind of small. Um, let me go into edit camera view and see if Let's turn the bullet layer back on because those are really small. They shouldn't be that small. Let's just make them a little bigger, I guess. Let's see what it looks like now. Turn that layer off. Grab our gun. Okay. And that might be a little far. Dropping two bullets. I wonder why that is. Hmm. That's weird. Oops, I just turned that one layer on. Let's turn, hold down shift and turn them on. Okay, well, the settings look fine. Um, let's, it looks like it's a little further away than it should be. So let's set that back down to one and reset at, uh, well, since this is inverse, do I need to change the, make that two and that one? I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, forgot to turn those layers off. Okay. Huh. It's dropping like a whole trail of them. That's weird. Huh. That is very strange indeed. I wonder why it's doing that. Well, tell you what, instead of a distance, let's set it to have a delay. And again, the ticks, 60, sec 60 ticks per second. So let's set it to have a delay of, oh, I don't know. Let's say, let's try 10 ticks and see if that will be good. Pick up our gun. I don't see a bullet appearing. Hmm. Well, let's make it appear after 30 ticks. So it's a half second. And let's slow, slow that cube way down. Let's make it, let's try 
half speed. Oops, got to turn that layer off. Okay, pick up our gun. Hmm, I don't see it performing the action that I'm telling it to. Well, I guess we'll just go with the what we had before, just the near. And oh, I see why. Okay, I feel like an idiot now. Um, proper. We'll leave the properties there. I forgot to tell it to be near to what. And uh, let's say near to Eddie. Or what is this, Eddie? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So turn the layer back on. When it's near, when it's inverse, one distance from Eddie. That's the that's the key right there. I didn't tell it which property to be near to. So now, uh, turn the layer off first. Play. Pick up the gun. Boom. Just shoots the one bullet. There we go. So we need to do to the bullet like we did with the box. When it appears, it needs to start moving. So let's turn those two layers back on. So we got here, always simple motion, 2.5 on the uh, linear V, Y axis. Okay, so we'll say add, 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 connect, connect, always simple motion, negative five. Okay, so I'll turn those layers off. Play. Go pick up your gun, and let's see if we can shoot one of those boxes. Ooh, maybe it's not far enough away from him. Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, the same thing. The bullet's facing the other way, so it needs to instead of flying in the negative direction, it needs to fly in the positive. And five's probably uh, five should be fine. So turn that layer off. Boom, play, pick up the gun, and shoots that box right off of there. Boom, boom. I know what you're thinking though. Why is that, I still see the box, the placeholder. Well, do the same thing we did with the box around Eddie. Select it and just make it invisible. So now turn those off, play, pick up the gun. Aim, fire, boom. Boom, shoot that box. Okay. So now, we're just about done here. There's a couple of things I want to show you before I go. Let's go ahead and escape out and save. It's like, I want sound in my game. I want to put, you know, I want to go pew pew when I shoot my gun. Well, that's, that's easy enough. Um... Let's let's do that. Let's go into. I have uh, Adobe Audition, and you can get a, another program. It's also open source. It's called Audacity, and I'm not sure the website, but just just Blender Audacity A U D A C I T Y, and it's just a free open source audio editing software. That's from what I can tell, it's just as good as uh, Adobe Audition. But I don't have it. I have Audition, anyways. So just let's create a new sound file. Okay, and let's hit record. And I want to sound effects. I'm going to go when he shoots his gun, it's going to go pew. Okay. That's all we want it to do. So I think this was the waveform that says pew. pew. Yep. You hear that? I put my speaker by the microphone. Pew, pew. Okay. So we're going to edit, copy to new. Pew. Okay. File, save as. And it needs to be a WAV file. So let's just say pew dot wave save. Okay, back to Blender. And now on our gun, when we hold down F and S, it's gonna fire uh, fire the bullet, but we also want it to play that sound. So let's just add one here, because we're gonna have it do two things at once, and this is going to be sound there it is load sound and go to the sounds and pew open sound and you say well where'd it go well you got to click the little down arrows here pew there we go 
play until we hit loop until we hit stop and then connect that and now when we play go pick up our gun and aim it actually we're just tapping the button so we want it to go ahead and play until it stops so now we should make a nice sound each time we fire hmm it's like you gotta hold the button the whole, down the whole time so let's go play until it's end I think that's what we need to do play end so now I'll pick it up there we go Okay, and that is the conclusion of my short game engine tutorial series. Hopefully you've learned something valuable. If not, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> There's plenty of other tutorials out there. Maybe you can uh, research and figure out how to do some stuff better than I've shown you. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you did learn something. I hope you enjoyed this. And... Um, I'll catch you in some further tutorials later on. So take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.